Hey students, welcome to episode 34 of the Film Student Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Lazzaroni. My guest on this week's show is Graham Anderson from the Magenta Cohort. We talk about making people uncomfortable for a laugh, and we discuss a number of Graham's current and former creations, including What's Wrong With Me and The Story of Noosey Goosey. Just listen, you'll see what I mean. On with the show. Well, I was so like I was just at home, like taking a few classes at a community college, mm-hmm. and for fun, I would look up uh, film schools. <laughs> <laughs> so I think my first contact with Harold Ramos was because I lived in Indiana, mm-hmm. and Chicago's super close. So I looked up Chicago film schools, and Harold Ramos Film School was right there. And then I was like, "That's cool," and I researched it a little. And then I heard it on some podcasts, mm-hmm. like uh, Improv for Humans, I think. That's a pretty common refrain. People either yeah. heard it from a podcast or a friend of a friend heard it from a podcast. Yeah. So I was like, maybe I should go to this place. Mm-hmm. Were you creating and stuff I, before that? Like, what what made you go in after look at look for film schools? Um, I've always been interested, like, when I was younger, not necessarily right before this, but I would like film sketches like me and my friends would try to mimic uh whose line is it anyway Mm -hmm. and do like improv games and film those and do different sketches and stuff like that but uh right before i came to harold ramus i was helping out uh my theater teacher at the community college put on plays run lights do things like that Mm -hmm. so it just seemed like the the standard path from there and I've always loved comedy. Mm-hmm. And you have a very unique comedic sensibility. Yeah, I agree. It's it's very <laughs> it's very dark. It it can be, <laughs> and it it rarely isn't. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, give me give me an example of one of the storylines that you've done because I I haven't been able to see all the Magenta projects. Well, my favorite character that I've done was for Mossman where I wrote a sketch uh, around this character called Noosey Goosey. Okay. (laughs) He was basically a magical noose that would appear and try to help people who were in need. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) How does a noose help people that are in need? (laughs) Well, he would... So, uh, I feel like I should preface this (laughs) by saying that I have experience with uh like depression and mental health stuff yes so that's a place i go to a lot to find (laughs) comedy (laughs) so like this the scene would be someone was about to kill themselves and then the noose they're using would turn into this like kind of person like a magical superhero called noosey goosey okay and uh, noosey goosey would talk them down and try to get them help who did you have playing the Noosey Goosey? I can't remember. I think it was for the exercise where uh, Mossman brought in uh, actors that he knew. Oh, okay. So. Uh, you may have had Ira and. Yes. Ira. Who else did we have with Ira? I can't remember who the okay. actress was that was with them. Yeah. So. But, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's kind How of. How did things. they respond to that? Um. <laughs> That's what I'm curious about. Like, <laughs> how how do people from the outside look at, at the things that you that you stick in their hands? I think sometimes they're just like, "What?" Because uh, I I like it when I make people uncomfortable, mm-hmm. like because these are things that I deal with basically on a daily basis. So if people if other people are uncomfortable with them, I think that's funny. Yeah, and I want to make them uncomfortable. I just like being weird. Yeah. So if I can never do stand up because the reaction I would get would be like a long stare and then people just groaning. That's the <laughs> reaction I would want from a crowd. But that's also you you're <laughs> going you that's almost a um uh Andy uh uh I'm blanking on his name from Taxi Andy uh, uh Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. That's almost an Andy Kaufman sensibility it where is it's a it's bit. not about humor for for the audience, it's humor of the audience. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's in- entertaining yourself. The audience is an instrument, Tony. And you get to go out and play them. I get to play them like an instrument. 
So what's uh, what projects are you working on right now? So I've got we've got our long term writing project, which I'm writing a feature film that is not a comedy. Oh, okay. It's uh, like a coming of age drama, and there's funny stuff in it because mm-hmm. I can't help it sometimes. Uh, but it's just about a young woman who's going through mental health stuff, mm-hmm. major depression, as I was diagnosed. That's my my evaluation said that. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's true. And she, so she's going through that, and her parents are very oppressive, and she wants to pursue uh, her friend romantically. There's not a lot of action in it yet. Mm-hmm. It's just like kind of dealing with kid stuff. Yeah. Trying to grow up. And how about for the short film? My short film is also about mental health. Surprise, surprise. So a young, <laughs> a young woman uh, comes... I mean, why stop now? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Most everything I've done up to this point in this school has been about sadness in one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about your, your uh, uh, nonfiction piece. But oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We will. Uh, so a young woman goes to... Uh, she gets hospitalized and goes to like group therapy and things for uh depression essentially and anxieties uh and then she gets released and she thinks she's home free but uh the personification of her anxieties comes and appears like in a for- in the form of just a goofy person okay and kind of harasses her until she deals with it or she has to learn to live with it Mm -hmm. so have you cast this out yet i have asked adriana to be the personification the goofy personification character who i call baggy (laughs) okay i could see that yeah she's on board i think (laughs) i hope depending on schedule (laughs) i think that's you're the third (laughs) person i'm aware of that wants to use her for uh for a final film she's great so she is yeah she's in my term too and i'm still trying to wrap that one up too (laughs) but uh so yeah but your your uh non-fiction piece Mm -hmm. which i i think i'm in you are in i okay yeah apparently edited to say things more or less not what i said in in the room so you did uh, you did what's wrong with me? Yeah, I tried to figure out what was wrong with me. So I didn't know really anyone that well at that time. <laughs> so I'm like, let's <laughs> let's start. Let's just dive in there. Let's get straight <laughs> into the deep end. <laughs> so I brought people like you in to try to help me figure out what's wrong with me. And you and like Sam and Jan and Diego said all very nice things. <laughs> and I edited you guys to say mean horrible things, things. <laughs> <laughs> but we were not the only ones that you interviewed no alec was doing a character i think <laughs> <laughs> i think alec is a character that's that's very true i mean uh, honestly i think I, cl- I got closest to his to his actual underlying persona when i had him on the podcast <laughs> and even that was kind of a character yeah <laughs> yeah well we're all characters tony yeah. if you really think about it this is true uh <laughs> So he was a character. Robbie was, I think, he pretended I was Graham Norton for half of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and so do you, did you finish that one? Is it the other? It's, I have a rough cut. Okay, but you haven't finished it. And then it. I have a slightly less rough cut. That's where all my projects are at. Yeah. They're rough and slightly less rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll be working on most of them until I'm 46. <laughs> and you're how old now? Uh, 24. Okay. So you've got some time. I've got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> so what what were your influences like coming into this? Like who, what shows and what uh, comedians and stuff like that do you really want to try and emulate? Oh, uh, so I was. All my comedy, all the comedy stuff that I, like, took in was from podcasts, mostly. So, Scott Ackerman's a big one from Comedy Bang mm-hmm. Bang. Jimmy Pardo from Never Not Funny is a huge one for me. Uh, Matt Besser and Improv for Humans. Paul F. Tompkins. Mm-hmm. Lauren Lapkus. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of dry delivery. Seems yes. to be more <laughs> your your uh, your realm. I do like dry stuff. I also like... Like, I realized during the podcast, I don't know if you've listened to it, but you talking you two to me 
Have you ever heard of that? Uh, I've heard of it. Who's who does it's that with one? Scott Ackerman and Adam Scott do it. Yeah, I learned two things when listening to that. I learned that I do not like you two very much, <laughs> and that Scott Ackerman's my comedy hero because, like, he just says random things sometimes that don't make sense and he gets the reaction from adam scott that's like ugh. yeah then that's the reaction i want tony <laughs> you just want somebody to be disgusted and yes. appalled you seem to find someone that that you can regularly produce those with <laughs> that, that is always going to be on board with just being disappointed I, and appalled i need that so if you're out there please give me a call <laughs> my number is unlisted so good luck but Somebody out there in the, in the listening audience just went, oh, <laughs> <laughs> just to make you feel good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I needed it. <laughs> so what are you trying to do with this? What's your what's your long term goal? Um, I don't really know. Like. I just when I came here, I just wanted to get experience and things mm -hmm. and I've gotten a lot of experience like I wasn't really a director and I've got directing experience or DP experience. I've gotten a bunch of that stuff. Uh, you know, I think my long-term goal is the same as a lot of people's long-term goals and mm -hmm. just continue producing work and mm -hmm. trying to get paid for it and trying to make something meaningful Yeah, that people can appreciate. Yeah. Are you more on the production side, the writing side? What's your trajectory? I came in writing and I'll continue writing till the day I die because it's fun and I love it. Yeah. Uh but I want to get it like more into performing and being mm -hmm. on camera stuff, which I You did know. you did a great job in uh whose was the one with Will as the clown? Oh Ian's. Was that Ian's? Ian's yeah. yeah. That one's hysterical. Well, thank you. I really like that. In this uh in this video we have a, a uh, clown being interrogated for uh for public defecation, which is because it's a clown, they're jelly beans, mm. uh, and so and they they're all grossed out by this. And <laughs> Graham is one of the, I guess you would call them yes men to yeah, a certain extent, a little bit. But you also happen to be the only one who speaks clown, <laughs> 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 the specific dialect of clown too. Yeah, that, that, that is perfect for uh, Carney. For <laughs> I remember the monologue. I didn't remember the monologue during filming, but. <laughs> I think I can oh, do so most great. of it now. It's so great. <laughs> but like that fits your your character. You have this nervous energy <laughs> when you're on screen. Like I, I I don't get that from you in person. Okay, that's, that's something that you that you I'm pull out. I'm hiding it well. <laughs> I get very quiet and go with the flow in person. Yeah. Which that's is true. That's accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But you're you also ha always have the Scott Ackerman type, <laughs> like interesting input thing to say in the conversation. It's a very big compliment. Thank you <laughs> so much for that. I'm glad you appreciate that. <laughs> um, so, like, what uh, what have you gotten the most out of so far in the program? Um, just like learning. I didn't know much about like cameras or just mm -hmm. being on set. So, just getting that experience of being on sets, being on session three sets and session two sets that where people are actually trying to make something is yeah. super valuable because I've never, if I have done that, it was either when I was a kid or by myself trying to make something with only me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is hard to do, Tony. Yeah. I'll have you know. It is hard to do. <laughs> I've, I've tried to do the, the minimal team stuff yeah. and it's difficult because you usually need somebody else in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> So you, but you'd made some stuff when you were a kid trying to do that stuff? Yeah. And I've, I've always, I think that's why I like writing so much because it's a solitary activity mm -hmm. for the most part. Uh, I've always been kind of like a solitary creator in a way. Yeah. And trying to do that in film doesn't work. <laughs> Your Instagram feed uh, is, is <laughs> always interesting. That's, I just want people to groan. That's all I want. How how many times have you just done it where you just turn on the camera while you're watching something? Well, then, so my goal there is I'm listening to a sad song and I'm trying to make myself cry. <laughs> but, like, usually okay. the quality <laughs> is just terrible, so you can't see. My eyes are watering. <laughs> so it's just me staring at a screen. <laughs> but 
is this is it's this art. a therapeutic thing for you or <laughs> is it just strictly something to to give a, a visceral reaction yeah i just want people to watch and go graham why <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> how do you get to that point how do you get to, to a point where, where you just want to make people groan is it <laughs> well i think i i take a lot of stock in failing and it's something for the most part there are different types of failure but failing and like getting a laugh or mm-hmm. just anything creative is something that i really enjoy doing yeah uh because i used to like really not enjoy doing it and it would yeah. really upset me if i didn't do didn't get a laugh or didn't write something correctly so okay i was like i can't do that anymore it's not healthy you've gotten to the point where you i feel like you've swung i have swung swung too, <laughs> too far, far the other direction <laughs> that, where you're like fine. <laughs> leaning into the failure but that's gonna appeal to a specific audience yeah. like you're gonna find some marketability <laughs> i think out of that this guy is failing and it's l- awesome <laughs> Look at this guy fail. He's very good at it. Well, and and it's interesting, too. I feel like we've got a bunch of people that have come through the program that have either mental health history. I know we talked about it with Carly on yeah. a recent episode. Uh, and uh, Big fan of the show, by the way. Yeah. I listen to every You're episode. a regular listener, which I, which I do appreciate. I you and it. Robbie yeah. tell me all the time. Although the, the thing that bothered me a little bit about Robbie, he told me the other day, uh, he said... Um, I I realized that I I haven't actually talked to you in a while. He's like, I feel like I've been talking to you just fine, but it's because I listen to you on the podcast all the time. And he's like, but I realized we haven't actually spoken in person. <laughs> and I'm like, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that's what it was, and not that you didn't like me anymore. <laughs> and maybe that's maybe that's a problem. Maybe that's why it, it gets tough to like socialize with people that yeah. feel like they're just listening to me talk it's here. Interesting. I've never thought about that before. Because it's, when you listen to podcasts, for sure, you feel like you know a person yeah. and <laughs> you're getting to know them. But I had that same thing. So uh, um, I worked on a web series uh, uh, called I Swear It's Not Boring. Um, and I swear it's not boring. But uh, <laughs> they're they're in the process of editing it. But w- one of the producers on there, uh, Laura Petro, she has she does a lot of comedy things with this girl maggie gates all over town and so you know follow laura on instagram and and that sort of thing so i always see stuff about laura and maggie and the other day i was uh on the train and maggie got on the train and i almost went up and talked to her and i was like she has no clue who the fuck i am (laughs) (laughs) that would be so creepy especially a guy looking like i do six (laughs) foot six with a giant beard approaching a a small woman on on a train might scare the crap out of her Mm -hmm. And and uh, so and so I said something to Laura. I was like, I almost went up to Maggie, but I didn't because it would have freaked her. Out. She <laughs> she died laughing. <laughs> well, it's crazy because I mean, we there's Instagram and there's Twitter. There's all these different ways to get to know people, but yeah. not to really get to know people. Yeah, like, it's a it's a digital existence. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird. Um, and have you watched American Vandal season two yet? Mm-mm. Did you watch the season one? I just we just watched it in Jeff's class. I never. Oh, just the one episode. Up. Yeah, I'm still on Frasier. You <laughs> forever on Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always be on Frasier uh, until they reboot it. Ooh, gross. They're they're in the process. What? I didn't know that. Yeah, look it up. <sighs> <laughs> yes, I got a Graham reaction. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, but. Uh, Oh shit! Where what <laughs> got me into Frasier? What was that? <laughs> oh, American Vandal. Yeah. Uh, um, so they talk about in that this whole thing of their generation is the first generation that lives twice. That they they not only live their actual real life, but because they are so well documented from you know effectively infancy when 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 you talk about their parents have oh, Facebook yeah. pages and we're logging it, they that they're they're so well documented that they now live a life online that carries on in eternity to the point of you know now with me too movement and stuff like that there are things where people are getting kind of retroactively bashed like james gunn losing a spot on guardians of the galaxy based on things he put on twitter years and years and years ago um back when he was still trying to find his voice of being kind of an insult type you know comedian yeah. but the people that know him are like he's a great guy he's super nice he's super charitable like he's 
he's not that that person but yeah. still like he's he's lived that life twice so because he went through that phase and screwed up back then that's now keeping him out of something he was frankly doing extremely well yeah. with. <laughs> he kind of like exploded in the guardians of the galaxy thing the, those movies are amazingly yeah. good like it's both of them are uh, the, the fact that he managed to come back for a sequel and do something as good yeah as the as the first is incredible i agree but yeah like how that's that's a world that i, I want to see explored more like somebody dive into that twitter and, and instagram like that that's an awkwardness thing that you can it, play around with it's true and going back to mental health a little bit like most people on social media don't post about sad things yeah like unless it's a big news event or what's going on around the world which is sad all the time uh <laughs> like personally Permanent personal sadness. sad things people don't really post much about so yeah. when you go on to instagram it can feel like terrible because everyone just looks happy <laughs> everybody looks like they're having the, they the greatest like time they know what they're doing and no one does uh my friend's sister-in-law she posts um because i went to their wedding so i met her through that and she posts on her instagram all the time these photos of her and her i think fiance husband i don't know uh they their job is is transporting boats for people like mm -hmm. they would basically get paid to to mo move a boat from miami up to new york or something like that so it's just sailing and and boating and stuff like that. and so they always have these great shots of like you know her feet and then the ocean laying out in front of her and like and uh all these different beaches and places that they stop and i, I ran into her at uh i think when one of their kids was born we, we ended up back in dc at the same time and she was. I was. I was like, you always look like you're. You're doing so well. She's like, yeah, I'm not. It's a lie. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's. It's. It's <laughs> really tough sometimes. And, but I just take the pictures of the really good parts and make it look like, <laughs> this is a happy life that I'm living. <laughs> That's not a healthy thing to do. No. And and it's it's weird because yeah, people are going to come to you and treat you differently because of how it looks. Absolutely. Yeah. Ugh. I'm There's sorry. A... <laughs> I, I I did something, didn't I? Did I made it so. sad. That's what I do. <laughs> it's 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 uh it's never boring, but it's always sad. Um. Mm. <laughs> uh, so what uh what are you trying to do right out of right out of school? Do you um, know what your next step is going to be? You've been talking to Lynn and doing those meetings. Yeah, I have been talking to Lynn a little bit, but uh, I think I'm going to try to like take more improv classes mm -hmm. around Chicago, stay here, just try to make more things. Try to keep, I'm not necessarily consistent in doing work, but try to be more consistent and mm -hmm. just producing sketches or shorts or anything yeah. that we can just to learn more about how things are done and how we can do things like fail enough times that we can succeed trial and error yeah yeah that's the only real way to learn and get good at this stuff i agree but um well in kind of wrapping up if uh, people want to try and track you down on uh, on instagram and see you trying to make yourself cry yes uh where, where can they find you they i think um what is it it's at gram jam gram band fuck <laughs> <laughs> Gram Bam Jam Band. <laughs> You're rethinking your online presence now <laughs> yes, as you way. as you try and That's share this with somebody. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Gram Bam Jam Band. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gram spelled. We were talking about this before the <laughs> before the show started. Yes. Gram spelled Graham. The American way. The American way, the not the way. <laughs> not the <laughs> not the Gaelic way. Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, any place else they can see? Do you, have you put? Have you, you haven't posted anything that you've created like, Not publicly yet. Yet, I'll probably uh, once we get through most of the term three mm -hmm. horror stuff, I'll probably put stuff on a YouTube channel or try to post stuff. But you'll share it on Instagram so people yeah, can see it there. Yeah, I'll do one minute increments on Instagram of like a ten minute video. See if it makes sense. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you.
And that was Graham Anderson. Thank you to Graham and to the Harold Ramis Film School and the Second City staff for their help. The song on this week's episode was Forest and Compass by Pioneer X. Check out more Pioneer X at pioneerx.bandcamp.com. This show is recorded and edited by me, Tony Lazzaroni. If you want to hear more from me and my classmates, teachers, and a few special guests, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, send us an email at filmstudentpod at gmail.com or find us on Twitter and Instagram at filmstudentpod. And be sure to check out some of my and my classmates' work at filmstudentpod.com, where you can also find a back catalog of all of our previous episodes if you want to check them out. See you all next week. Class dismissed. <laughs>